you would never have a, a disaster of any kind, a plane crash, you would never have a nuclear plant meltdown and then say, oh, we don't need to know what happened. Oh, forget about it. You never do that. It's crazy. Right. But the, even the new line from Anthony Fauci, now retired, is, well, anything's possible. I'm pretty sure it wasn't in the lab. And anyway, there's nothing we can do about it. So everybody just move on. Now, that is a retrenchment of the previous position of uh, a group of scientists, of which he is one member, one influential member, who intentionally steered the media and the public and the intelligence community, by the way, in the wrong direction, on purpose, to cover their own asses. As far as I can tell, you really were one of the first, you were basically the first, let's say, mainstream journalists on a huge prominent platform to specifically articulate this warped, this warped thing that might have happened, which is Anthony Fauci, who we're told is the great savior of the pandemic, might have championed the research that led to the pandemic. So, Anthony Fauci, the hero of the pandemic, is the most important person in the world of gain-of-function research there is. I've heard of that guy. Right? Yeah. Do you want to hear more? Yeah. He, two years later, how did that hold up? I think it held up pretty well, and it's yeah. not because I had a bias. It's not because I wanted the lab leak theory to be true. It's not because I don't like Anthony Fauci. I've met him a few times. He seems like a perfectly nice man. He, we go to the same Safeway. I see him there sometimes. Uh, no problem with him personally, but on this issue, I feel like he acted improperly, and I think I have the evidence to back that up. Now, leveling that charge in April 2021, as you point out, was controversial because there was a, an omerta, there was a, a, a prohibition on speaking ill of Anthony Fauci in the mainstream media because he was being spoken of so poorly in the conservative media. And that's because this issue of the COVID origins got wrapped up into our media wars because it got wrapped up into our cultural wars. And you know, there's a long explanation that I can give you if you want for how that happened. But the bottom line is that, you know, I come from a position of thinking that all public officials are, uh, are, are, are deserving of scrutiny and all public officials are imperfect. And there's no, we live in a, a, a democratic republic where we don't hold up human beings as deities. We have no infallible scientists. We have no great leaders. We have no crown princes. We have no, we're, once we canonize any individual in our system, well, that's a problem. That's a defect in the way that our democracy is supposed to be working. And the role of fourth estate is supposed to be a check on that power. And in this case, I think that a lot of my colleagues, unfortunately, in the mainstream media have totally failed because they got caught up in the, the narrative that was Fauci's the good guy and Trump is the bad guy. And even if you believe on the whole that that's true, and I'm not saying that I do, I'm just saying that there, you've got to admit that three years in, as you look at some facts about his behavior when it re relates to this specific issue, not talking about the vaccines, not talking about the masks for a minute, just the COVID origins, the thing that I know about, the thing that I did the reporting on, the thing that I wrote a book about during the pandemic um, that held up three years later. Uh, on that issue, he, I, I do think he made some serious mistakes and continues to withhold vital information from the American people about how we got into this mess and what we can do to prevent the next pandemic because the origin question is not about politics. It's not about Anthony Fauci. It's not about Donald Trump. It's about how do we prevent this from happening again? You would never have a, 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 a disaster of any kind, a plane crash. You would never have a nuclear plant meltdown and then say, oh, we don't need to know what happened. Oh, forget about it. Let's just, let's just move on. Let's assume everything is possible and nothing's possible and you know, do everything and do nothing all at the same time. You never do that. It's crazy. But the, even the new line from Anthony Fauci, now retired, is, well, anything's possible. I'm pretty sure it wasn't in the lab. And anyway, there's nothing we can do about it. So everybody just move on. Now, that is a retrenchment of his previous position, or I, I should say the, the previous position of uh, a group of scientists, of which he is one member, one influential member, who intentionally steered the media and the public and the intelligence community, by the way, in the wrong direction on purpose to cover their own asses. And what, the reason that they did that is because they had a conflict of interest. And again, you know, I'm not trying to be controversial, I'm trying to do my job. My job is to you know, use the skills and tools and resources of my organization to you know, poke 
kick the tires on what the government says. Okay? Right. And that's, that's what I've been doing for 20 years. This was the only time, um, one of the only times anyway, that 99% of my mainstream media colleagues were like, oh, that's wrong, you shouldn't do that. And, or that's crazy, or, oh, don't worry about it, you know? And, yeah, well, you're okay, you're yeah. reluctant to swag out. I'll do it for you though. You haven't just been, like, you've been epically vindicated in a, in a key call about the most important domestic policy issue in the last de couple decades, potentially the last century. I'll say it for you, okay? I'll say it for you. That's why you're well, coming on Gigi Productions I, channel. I, honestly, here's, here's why I don't feel vindicated is because very few minds have actually been changed. And, you know, there's been no action taken on the new information that has come out since 2020, which is essentially that we're looking at two piles of circumstantial evidence. One pile of circumstantial evidence that points to a natural origin for the pandemic, and one pile of circumstantial evidence that points to a lab-related accident of some kind. And there are many theories within each of those piles. All I'm saying is that what I did was collect some of the earliest evidence. A lot of other people in the last three years have piled on a lot of new evidence. Yeah. And none of that is taken seriously or even acknowledged by those scientists who have a conflict of interest. And the problem with the mainstream journalists who covered this, a lot of them science writers actually, is really, we didn't understand. You know, we, we always talk about bot political bias and, and, and factionality and source capture amongst political journals, which is true. National security journalists all captured by their deep state sources, right? Some of that's true. I work very hard to understand my source bias and my confirmation bias. I'm not perfect. Sometimes I'm sure I'm susceptible to it, but we didn't realize the science writers were totally captured. And that who were their best fa sources? Anthony Fauci and Peter Daszak, the head of the EcoHealth Alliance, who told them that it was a conspiracy theory that it came from the lab. And they ran with that because they didn't know any better because they were captured. Same thing with the intelligence community. When the intelligence community does its review, you have four agencies that say, well, with low confidence, we think it came from the lab. Where did they get that information? They tasked their intelligence review to those same experts who had the same conflict of interest, the same exact pe people in some cases, or at least their friends. And then they use the open source research that these experts put forth to justify their low confidence conclusion. And then when the FBI and the Energy Department, who have the actual national laboratories on their side, the actual scientific investigators, the best in the world actually, the best in the US government to be sure, come out and say, well, we feel equally strong, or in some cases stronger, that the lab was involved somehow. They say, oh, those guys don't know what they talk. The FBI and the, Ener the national laboratories don't know. It's, 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 it's ridiculous, yeah. so. Well, Josh, how do you yeah. not impute nefarious motives? I know you're kind of reluctant to do so, all right? Well, because I, again, I, 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 Based it on the reporting, my, what my reporting shows is that there were various motives by various actors who did various things. So, yes, for those scientists like Peter Daszak, who had the conflict of interest, who work, the, you can infer a nefarious motive by the evidence. The evidence is what they were saying to the American public, namely that the lab accident theory was a conspiracy theory and racist, and you better not say it and shut the hell up if you say it, uh, with what they were saying to each other privately. And that's part of the new evidence that came out, not from me, by the way, by other journalists and NGOs who have fought bitter FOIA lawsuits and, and received leaks and published information, taking also risks with their careers. I'm taking a risk, sure, but I'm taking a calculated risk because, again, I'm, that, I'm a professional and I am trained to do this and that's why I uh, feel comfortable doing what I do. But a lot of other people out there, scientists especially, in that first year of the pandemic, didn't want to say what they thought about the origin. They would call me all the time and say, oh, we can't say Anthony Fauci did something wrong here because we'll lose our grants, we'll lose our money. And eventually more and more of them came out and that took bravery and that took courage on their part. You know? And so over time, what happened, especially on the Joe Rogan Show to answer your actual question is that people came to the issue without those biases. People, as more and more people understood that this was an issue we can't forget, we can't just let it go because there's gonna be another pandemic and we live in a world of limited resources. So either you're gonna close all the markets in China or you're gonna spend that time and resources and look for viruses all over, in, all over the world and keep digging up dangerous viruses, or you're gonna focus your time and attention on biosafety and figuring out which labs you can trust and figuring out which risky research is really worth doing. But the Joe Rogan thing was important because millions of people who had, didn't have all that bias were able to think about it on their own for the first time. And when they thought about it and looked at the pile of evidence, piles of evidence rather that were present at that time in April 2021, even then it seemed at least plausible, at least, you know, like something we should check out that the labs might have been involved. And the way to be right is not to, uh, not to have confirmation bias, not to insist that whatever you thought was right at the beginning 
must be proved right. The way to be right and the way to have integrity as a journalist or as a thinker or as a writer is to be able to re-examine your own assumptions and change your mind when the new information comes in. And that's what, we, that's what we're failing to do as a town in Washington, as a society. And that's because the, the people with the conflict of interest are still pouring uh, uh, cold water on anyone who tries to still. say it. And, and don't get me wrong, if the lab leak theory turns out to be true, I'm fine with that. I don't care. You know, I, if, the, if it came from the market, if it came from a frozen food package that was shipped from Norway, or if it came from Fort Detrick, like the Chinese Communist, like the, we have a lab yeah, theory, they have a lab theory. Yeah. They say it came from a lab, right? <laughs> they came they from our know. lab. <laughs> they came from our lab. That's their lab leak theory. Now, <laughs> that's ridiculous in one sense because if it had came from Fort Detrick, there probably would have been a, a spill somewhere near Fort Detrick, right? But there wasn't. There was a spill in Wuhan where all the bat coronavirus labs are. <laughs> <laughs>